everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert and you join me down in the shed with two very special guests. The first guest is Dave Linnett from Universal Audio and the second guest is, well, Dave, the present you've brought for me, right? Yes, the Ox. The legendary Ox. Now, there was a lot of excitement mm. around um, the NAM, Summer NAM show Summer NAM, yeah. about this baby, yeah. but we have one. Yeah. And it's a thing of beauty. Actually one best in show, I think, uh, yeah, from for, for Summer Nam, yeah. Awesome. Mm. So, uh, we have it. Tell us a little about it. Um, Ox, we call it Ox the Amp Top Box. And basically it's uh, designed to just take your tube amplifier and, and, and get everything you ever wanted to get out of it. Cool. So, so uh, the setup we have is my Chandler GAV-19T in there, uh, and we have a couple of microphones on the cabinet. But the connection is actually through the aux, isn't it? So we're going from yeah. the guitar straight into the amp, amp, speaker outputs into the aux, and then this acts as a kind of power soak and uh, volume control, master volume control for the speaker. Yeah. yeah, so first and foremost, it's a reactive load box. So the part of the key part of that, I think, for me, is the reactive part, because there's a lot of load boxes out there. There's some reactive load boxes out, you know, out there as well, but a lot of effort was put into this to make it really react like a speaker. So it really loads the amp the way it wants to be loaded, like where it sees a speaker, mm -hmm. sort of a which is a constantly changing impedance. It really can affect the feel of the amplifier. Yeah, and then um, allows you to turn down the amp. So you can you can actually attenuate, or you can turn it off completely. So first and foremost, what it's doing right now is just. So that's just the the Bayer and the SM57 that we have on the cabinet. Right. We and we can control the volume of that. Right. So we're down here on two up at five. It's almost maximum. So it's going to be. We'll play it and distort the uh, the preamps and everything. Hurt ourselves. Exactly. Well, yeah. But I think for somebody who, who uses tube amps and wants to actually be able to turn them up, particularly non-master volume stuff, um, this allows you to turn it down and get it all the way down to a conversation yeah, level. And still, at these levels, retain well, it still the sounds feel. Like the amp. Yeah. And, and it still cleans up. It still responds to the clutch way that, that amplifier would if it were cranked up and, and, and killing us all, right? Yeah, so we get all the dynamics I would expect out of the amplifier. But of course, also going on in there, and we have the, oh, the iPad as well. Yes. So we've got, a, uh, to explain the setup, We've got two mics on the cabinet, but the Ox also has a stereo set of outputs, and we're yes. recording those to Pro Tools as well. And this is where the UA DSP side of things kicks yeah. in. Yeah. So I flipped this off. Now I'm, I'm not going to hear the cabinet as well. I could be running this line level or listening through headphones or whatever while the cabinet's still going, mm -hmm. too, which is, again, a difference between us and some of the other low boxes out there that will just kill your signal. Yeah. Um, but I can be running through headphones here. If I you know don't want to use this, I can and and then I can pair my iPad or or a computer, a Mac or a PC, with the aux via Wi-Fi. So does that mean the aux has got Wi-Fi like a Wi-Fi router built in? Yes. That's very cool. Yeah. So we haven't got to worry about trying to pair this to your your Wi-Fi network. You just no. go straight to the aux. You can do that too if you still want to be able to get online, but mm -hmm. you can pair just directly with the aux. Very cool. So yeah. in a gig situation, maybe when you're using this as a Yep. To bring on stage volume down. Yeah. Um, and you're maybe switching cabs, which let's face it, you can't do on a gig normally. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Well, or on a gig, yeah, if you want to use this to for, for, for direct, you could use the app on your iPhone. Yeah. You know, or you could just set up your presets at home, store them in the aux, and then you've got, um, you know, six different presets right here that you can flip through and then still have control over. The, the the room room sounds okay well. so that's so very kind cool. of jumping ahead but yeah that's very very cool so we've also and so we've got effectively a, a pair of microphones on the line output which are also going yep. to Pro Tools um, and we've kind of played with it a little bit to try and make the aux output sound a bit like my cabinet so we've got a tuba 12 with GT75s or I think these are G65s aren't they yeah, yeah. Celestian 65s 
Uh, I've done out 57 and a ribbon 160. Yeah. Um, we'll put the 57 a little more off axis. axis. Yeah, and this pretty much. <laughs> The only thing I would say is that's perfectly in phase with what we've been messing together. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is a good a good point to make is that you you don't worry about that stuff anymore. Mm. These mics are just sort of placed. Our, our product manager James Santiago has done you know years and years of playing with microphones and, mm -hmm. and amplifiers and it's just you know sort of the, the, the tone meister and. Um, these are all sort of placed right in where he believes the sweet spots are. Mm. So you've got, with this, you've got 17 different cabinet models that you can choose between. Wow. Um, and it's what we're calling dynamic speaker modeling. So it's physical modeling of speakers. It's not an impulse response. It's right. very so it's different. Yeah. So it's more like what we do when we model a a Neve 1073 or a Fairchild or something. Mm -hmm. It's a physical model of what it's doing. And a speaker, is not just an impulse, right? It's just not, it's not a static thing. It's moving, it's changing, it's living, it's breathing. And this is really getting into the nuance of that. That's very cool. And then we've got microphones. Yes, plenty of them. So here, uh, the, the six different microphones I can choose between mm -hmm. and a DI. Right. So I can also just choose to have no microphone if I want to record maybe one mic and a DI, yeah. and then I can use my impulse responses later. That's very if cool. I, if I do want and to you can have use all VIs and, and all the normal yep. goodies that we've got. yeah. So here's the microphones. You can choose the 57 there. If you look at the cabinets, same kind of way I can choose here. You can flip to, this is our 212 Ace top, which is obviously a based on an Ace. We know 30. what that's supposed to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. So cleans up and yeah, but immediately gets more boxy and more focused. Yeah, you know? that's um, really nice. I can also get to something like a classic four yeah. by twelve cab. Now, right now, you'll see this knob speaker drive, where it's at the minimum right now, right? Which actually is making the not so much of the cone breakup that you mm -hmm. would expect to get yeah. out of the speaker. Um, as I turn it up, you'll hear it get kind of warmer. And as I turn it up even more, it gets almost kind of squashy, and you start to get cone cry. Yeah. So the speakers actually resonate at the same frequencies that these speakers of this particular cabinet. As if you're driving it in. really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. And again, just, you need to feel it really to have it feel like the real mm -hmm. thing. But if I remember correctly, this guy has cone cry. So if I hit a note, if I bend up to like an F sharp, control how much you get of that right there and actually there's notes in there where this will do it at F sharp it'll do it at G sharp and like C and even yeah. for passing stuff it just blends in there and when you're playing full chords and things and you get those notes it just it just gives you this stuff that you didn't expect to get out well of it sounds it. like playing through a cabinet exactly yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly that's it right <laughs> Um, so that's the dynamic speaker modeling. Um, the room, again, uh, another thing that if you, you find when you're using models or you know using um, running anything direct, even close miking sometimes, it can start to feel like your string gauge goes up. Mm -hmm. you know yeah and it's a big part of that is just real room ambience. So right here, we have dynamic room modeling, which is very similar to what we did with Oceanway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a model of, Studio 610, our studio yeah. in Scotts Valley. So here. Yeah. 
So, you know, you don't even notice it, and really, in some ways, until it's gone. You know, you can actually uh, solo it. And then anything I'm doing here, like I said, can be stored to this knob. So you can go from wildly different sound. 4 by 12 again with some, but then like a little tiny 1 by 8. And they're stored locally, not in the iPad or yes. iPhone or whatever. Yeah, that's stored locally, and I, you can create a whole bunch of banks and presets, and then very drag cool. kind of whatever you want to this knob, basically. Very, very cool. Yeah. And you've got control of the room on its own. Yeah, so if front. I to turn this, it actually is very cool. changing that there. Um, you can further start to shape things. You know, obviously, each of the microphones is, has off axis, and you can roll off the bottom here. Um, you can also, also have com EQ which is sort of a guitarist-friendly yeah, yeah. graphic EQ, but... I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go in and actually choose the frequencies and tweak it deeper, yeah. and then when you go back to that, that's what you're controlling. Right, that's so very I cool. I kind of really dug that as yeah, well. Yeah, I love that. You got that for each of the microphones. Let me go back to something bigger here. And then over here, you've got a master EQ. Um, you've got... An 1176 SE, so if you want to squash it a little bit, you can start pushing that a little bit there. Yeah. That one. Nice. Um, we've What's got that? a delay as well, which I believe is based on our precision channel strip. Nice modulation on that one. Yeah. Of course, we've got our plate. I think it's fair to say when we first got the, um, I hate the word press release, I think the heads up is probably a better one. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of kind of um, rendered images of it and stuff. We were a bit kind of, so what is it? What's it going to be? What's it do? And it's actually fantastic to see it in the flesh or should I say in the timber because the, the yeah. case is really nice. And can you do me a walnut one to match it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you have different woods. And I love, Flame, I maple, love the, the eye. I really, that's that's staying, right? The whole kind of stuck on label I thing. don't know if that's staying. I've I seen other really ones where cool. it said rig, but originally I think it said cabinet and we changed it because really you're sort of changing the whole rig. Yeah, really. I love the stuck on kind of. I do too. No, um, I know. That kind yeah. of. Pressed out. We'll have to put them in the box. You can choose right? from. Yeah, from the seventies all over. Yeah. that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, it's Thank been you. an absolute pleasure. Uh, but for now, my name is James Ivy, uh, and I will see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk. <laughs>